this video, I'm going to be showing you how we can create a candlestick chart with real data from the Bitcoin API. And it's going to look like this once we are done with the project. As you can see right now, we have a two day chart which registers hourly increases and decreases in Bitcoin. And we can also change that to be of a daily value. So as you can see from the 1st of March until today, we've got all of this candlestick data and you're going to be able to go as far back as you want, but I'm just going to show you how you can insert API data into this candlestick chart using Python. So let's go ahead and close this and start a new project in Python. So the first thing we have to do is go to our terminal and we are going to install MPL finance. Then we have to go ahead and install pandas. And it looks like it was already satisfied. So finally, we can go ahead and install requests. And those are the only packages we have to install for this project. So let's go ahead and close this window. And finally, we can go ahead and import MPL finance as MPF. And then we need to import pandas as PD and finally import requests. So we're gonna go ahead and create a function to make this look very clean. So crypto candles, and the first parameter is going to be the start time. Then we need to provide a base currency, what we want it to convert into essentially, and a versus currency. And finally the interval, whether we want it to be every minute, every hour or every day, we need to provide the interval. Then we have to go ahead and provide a URL where we will get the data from. So we're going to type in HTTPS double dot double slash dev dash API dot shrimpy dot IO. Then we have to provide version version one exchanges, Binance and candles. Then we also have to provide a few queries and we are going to create a payload for that. So the first one we want to insert is the interval and that's going to be the interval that we insert at the top followed by the base trading symbol which is going to be the base currency. Then we need to provide the quote trading symbol which is going to be the versus currency. And let's also provide a date to start from. So it's gonna be start time, and that's going to equal the start time. Next, we have to go ahead and create a response, and that's going to equal the requests.get, the URL, and for the parameters, we are going to insert the payload. Then the data is going to equal the response to JSON format. Now we need to go ahead and create a few lists which we can insert into our data frame to create the candles. And to do this first, we're going to create one that's called open price, close price, the high price, the low price, and finally the date and time, which I'm just gonna call date P. And this is going to equal five empty lists. So we're gonna go like that and just paste it five times. Now let's go ahead and do a quick test to make sure everything works. So we're gonna go ahead and print the data from the JSON. And then of course we need to call this function and it is expecting a few values. So for the start time, we're just going to provide the date of 2021-04-09, which was a few days ago. Then the base currency is going to be Bitcoin and the versus currency is going to be the Euro followed by a one hour interval. Now we can go ahead and run this by right clicking on main and clicking on run. And you'll notice that we will get a response with all the data we're looking for. And it's actually going to be a lot of data. So if you just scroll, you'll probably never reach the end. But what matters is that it is working and you got a working response. So we're just going to comment this out because we will use this exact function later and delete the print statement. The next thing we have to do is type in for candle in data, we want to append the value at each index so we can get all of this info from the JSON response into these lists. So for the open price, we want to append the float value of candle at the index of open. So as you can see, we're just going to be taking these values from each one of these items uh, in the JSON. Then we can go ahead and copy this and paste it five times. Then we're just gonna change this to high price and inside here, enter the high value, change this to the low price and append the low value. Then we're going to get the closing price and insert the close value. And then for the time, we're going to do that. And this should not be a float. So we can just go ahead and delete that, insert candle at the index of time. 
Below that, we're going to create some raw data, and this is going to be for cleaning it with pandas. And the first one we need to insert is date with an uppercase letter, of course. And the first one is going to be pandas date time index because we have to convert it into something that pandas can read. And we are just going to insert our time P list. Then we can go ahead and create the open, which is going to be our open price list, the high price, which is going to be our high price list, the low, which is our low price list, and finally the closing price, which will be our close price list. Then we should create a data frame from this information, so PD data frame is going to equal the raw data and we have to set the index to the date. Then we can go ahead and print this so we can see what values we got and how it cleaned up the data. So let's go ahead and uncomment this again and click on save or click on rerun. Now you'll notice that we will get this data frame with all of these values and it is pretty clean. The index has changed into a date, which is perfect because that's what we need for the candlestick chart. But you'll get the open price, the high price, the low price, and the closing price for each one of these dates and hours. So finally, we can go down and refer to our plotting library. And here we have to type in plot, which is going to take a data frame. And it's going to be of type candle with the style of Charles, which will make sure it's green and red so it looks nice. The title is going to be equal to the base currency and the Y label is going to be equal to a formatted string that says price in the versus currency. And finally, we need to call mpf.show. And just in case you want to use this information for further processing, I recommend returning it as a data frame. But now if we go ahead and click on run, you'll notice that from this date, we'll get all the values for Bitcoin and they will all be inserted inside our plot. And there we go. For the past two days, we have got the hourly information for Bitcoin. And as you can see, it rises, it falls. We've got the highs, the lows, and everything is there. And if you want to customize this, you can go down here and you can change it to Ethereum to Euro, and we can change it to a one day interval starting from, let's say last month. So we'll do 0301 and click on rerun. And you'll notice for the past 30 or 40 days, we'll get all the values of Ethereum in Euro in a candlestick format. And I have to specify also that this API does not work for everything. For example, if you type in Bitcoin to USD, it's going to give you an error because for some reason this API does not have that. So you're going to have to experiment with the values that work and with the values that don't work. As you can see right there, index minus one is out of bounds, which means that did not exist in the API. But if you do Bitcoin to Euro, it works perfectly fine. And you can also do things such as Ethereum to Bitcoin, but once again, you're going to actually have to experiment with this to see what works and what doesn't. For here, we've got the price of Ethereum to Bitcoin, and it goes from the 1st of March to the 10th of April. But that's actually all it takes to create a candlestick chart in Python. And I hope you understood that all you have to do is provide values for date, open, high, low, and close. And you can use this candlestick chart with any data you want. Just make sure you format it correctly or clean it correctly so you can insert it into the finance plotting library. But with that being said, as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.